Foot Clan, today we are answering your questions, league questions, start sick questions, trade questions. It's awesome. And we get into Thursday night football. You don't want to miss it. Hey, Foot Clan. Thank you for supporting our independent podcast. We're honored to be nominated once again for the best sports <laughs> podcast this year. And we couldn't do it without you and your undying Foot Clan support. Come join our community at jointhefoot.com and get an extra episode each and every week. Let's get to the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's almost football time, <laughs> but not yet. That won't fit lyrically. It's almost football time. <laughs> no. No, no, he he passed on it. Wednesday, November 13th. Welcome in. Apparently, this is show number 817. 817. Is, We're still counting. I thought that number meant something. Like, apparently, you know, this is a big number, but that, it's just 817. Nope, nope. Just okay. every once in a while, choosing to just throw the number out there. Pretty, pretty cool number. We've got buy or sell on the show today. Some news to catch you up on. We're going to hit the mailbag. We've got the Thursday night preview. How are you guys doing today? I am doing excellent this morning. I woke up for the first time in a week and my throat didn't hurt. So that was wow. that was a delightful experience. Uh, we hold on to really big wins like that <laughs> in your mid-30s. <laughs> not a sponsor. Hashtag not a sponsor. But did you indulge in... No one's been more excited about Disney Plus than you. Oh, oh yes, I yeah, not not a sponsor, but uh, would happily sponsor them. Oh, I, I said I'd love a free sub, but I <laughs> Yo, I, was, I, I just, don't need it, man. I'm I'm locked for three years, that's baby. True. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I sat down and I started the X Men series with the boys. I was going to ask you whether yeah. whether you <laughs> went like they've got all these new series coming out, which are exciting, but then. You could go to the archives and like go Ducktales or something. Yeah, we we started X Men and then I watched Jason. What are you doing with your chair? I uh, my my foot hit the lever that says he, I go down now. He just <laughs> went straight down, and I don't think it was on video. Uh, I think it was. Oh, oh, oh. Brooks is shaking his head now. But I did watch the uh, the Jeff Goldblum show. Did you? Yeah, the whole first episode is about sneakers, and I could barely handle what was happening. In this show. You're just floating above your couch? Yes. I just thought I'd ask. I figured you were watching some nostalgic cartoon, and I was you right. You were correct. Uh, I encourage you, check out the show, Apple Podcasts, subscribe, review. We're on Spotify. We're ad-free on Stitcher Premium. Like I said, the community's jointhefoot.com. Excited to get into it today. Let's do some buy or sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Well, last week we did an NFC North edition of Buy or Sell, and it looks like I came out on top, which made me feel I, good. And I, then I take issue with this. And then uh, I, I see Grandpa wins on the side, which makes me feel bad. Well, yeah. I take issue because one of the, the over-under bets we did was on Matthew Stafford's passing yards. Oh. And for some reason, Brooks is giving you the victory. Actually, that yeah, that's, that's not really f because I said under. Yeah, you both sold. It was 300 yards. Well, well, Stafford hit it. You both sold. I bought. So I lost. That, uh, look, in fairness, <laughs> yeah, that's he, did really not, not, he did not have over 300 passing yards. No, not even close, Mike. So you I, weren't even close to being right. I'll take the W on this one. Oh, my goodness. You, well, no, you didn't win. Well, I won that question. <laughs> so, yes. All right, AFC West edition heading into week 11. I love that this buy or sell starts with a name I – want to bring up a lot this week Keenan Allen does he top 70 receiving yards versus Kansas City mind you he has not done that since week three he also hasn't scored since week three I'm buying this is uh I'm, I'm in on Keenan this week Monday Night Football Kansas City they're gonna need to keep up and Keenan Allen's really good he is excellent the volume has still been there he was very close to this last week he had still had 11 targets Eight for sixty-eight, so just a just a hair under. I will also buy because the, the 
the peripheral numbers are there. Like he's getting the target volume, and you're right. You got to keep up with Kansas City. So I'm still, I still believe in Keenan Allen. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be unanimous. You, it's hard to project him to have a poor game against Kansas City. On the other hand, do you want to sell though? Uh, let's ask the next question. I might. Okay, Damian Williams, 100 total yards. So rushing, receiving. Week 10, he was at 109. Week 9, he was at 128. So he's done it in back-to-back -back weeks facing the Chargers, 100 total yards. Buy or sell? I am going to buy this one as well. I think that does he – Does it hurt? It it does hurt a little <laughs> bit. Look, I mean, <laughs> I've, I've said from <laughs> hurts long a lot ago, a bit. when he is the starting running back for the Kansas City Chiefs, he's excellent for fantasy despite whatever talent – although I will – got to give him at least one shout-out because there was a play. Yes. Okay, there was a play we're watching, and I assumed – that they brought in, like it was Daryl Williams or Darwin Thompson, because I was like, oh, man, that was a good run. Who like that? I genuinely you know, thought. You said, no, you verbatim said, there's no way that was Damian Williams. Yeah. And, and it, then he rose, and you were like. And it was 26, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm, but the point is, he, he looked pretty good. So I'm going to buy here. I think he uh, has the role locked down this week. All right, it was it was close last week, 109 yards. I guess I'll sell to be contrarian here and think he, he gets just under that. Yeah, the 100-yard the mark is tough because he can still have an excellent fantasy day and not hit 100 yards. But the Chargers, that's a pretty solid matchup for the running back, so I'll buy. Now, I will say this. Do you expect LaShawn McCoy to be active? No, he probably needs more rest for to down the stretch. We're not to the stretch yet. <clears throat> Do they keep playing – like when he's doing this quote-unquote rest, do they go and like show him videos of his like Philly and early <laughs> Buffalo days? They show him videos of, of Damian Williams oh, being on. better. Oh, no. Don't fumble, Damian. Not again. <laughs> please, Dar please don't. Honestly, if Damian's alone and LaShawn's inactive again, he's probably going to do it, but I'll sell for – for the sake of right. somebody winning this week. Derek Carr, is he going to end up a top 10 quarterback versus Cincinnati over the last four weeks? 17th, 7th, 12th, 20th. Yes, I will buy. The Bengals, the, I, want all, I want all my players every single week playing against the Bengals. Derek Carr, I must give him his due. He has actually been excellent. Not just good, he's been a pretty excellent quarterback. He's been solid for fantasy as well, so I, I will buy, especially in this plus matchup. Yeah, I'll give him credit in this one. Uh, it's going to be close. He's not the kind of guy that's really going to go out there and put up a top five performance, so you're betting on the back half, but I'll buy it. Yeah, this is a very, very interesting line. I like Derek Carr quite a bit this week. I think he's probably a, you know, a top 12 guy. That top 10 is really tough. He's only done that once on the season. Against Houston, he was number seven. He was top 12 a couple weeks ago against Detroit. I'm going to sell. I think he's going to have a great game, but yeah. I, I think that's that's a really tough line to get. Honestly, to. the one thing in his way would be the Raiders DST this week uh, against Cincinnati, or a Josh Jacobs. You know, what happened to Aaron Rodgers last week? Sure, type of thing. Darren Waller five total catches, which seems <sighs> like seems like an easy. You know, you have to buy it, right? You don't though. The last three weeks, just seven total across those three weeks. Two, two, three. The previous six weeks average was 7.3. So things have really changed for Darren Waller, and people are looking around saying, look, where's the walrus, Mike? Ever since you dressed up as a walrus. Ever since they paid him. Yeah, uh, yeah, that is, that's really true. It, it it's coincides. only kind of true. I think he had like his biggest game of the year after he was paid. That's fair against Green Bay. Yeah, and then he had, you know, it's not really his fault. He's not getting a lot of targets. I don't think he's a different player. It's just... The way the ball is, is uh, you know, Hunter Renfro more involved, Tyra yeah. Williams back and healthy, Josh Jacobs over 40 carries a quarter lately. It's not Waller's fault, but what do you do here? Do you buy five catches against Cincinnati? I'm going to sell it. I think he's in the, I think three or four. I am contractually obligated to buy. Yeah. yeah. And I will sell because, uh, you know, five receptions means he's getting – seven or eight targets, and I don't know that they're going to need him that much in this game. All right, last one. Philip Lindsay, 11 total fantasy points against Minnesota. Coming back off the bye week, he's averaged 10.9 on the season. He's the RB12. 
And, you know, Minnesota is pretty stout D. They're at home. 11 fantasy points, though, not a high bar. I'm going to sell it on the basis of limited passing work since Brandon Allen's been on board. Yeah, I think it comes down to a rushing touchdown, and so I will sell. I'm going to buy. Uh, you know, I, I just think his talent is great, and Minnesota, while they're a good defense, they're not the defense of I believe you called the them last few years. dead middle yesterday. <laughs> yes, they they were dead middle. Uh, Which, where is dead middle on your on – your, It's uh, either 16 or 17 in the NFL because technically there is no – Right. Extreme. Middle. Okay, I, that's what I was getting at there. There's no exact. There's two dead middles. There's, there's two dead middles, and they were number sixteen against that position. They're better against the run, but I, I still think Philip uh, Philip Lindsay can get it done. What about Philip Rivers? He <laughs> so he's on my mind, obviously. <laughs> after last week, um, and we have our waivers running soon. Andy, you and I are playing each other in a very brutal matchup. Oh, this do we week. have a big surprise coming up? We'll find out whether or not I am moving on from Philip Rivers oh or not this week. Probably mid-show. Okay. All right. We'll find out. We do have a matchup in League of Record. That was Buy or Sell presented by Pristine Auction. Use the code BALLERS over at pristineauction.com. Save yourself $5 towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. All right, Mike reported this. He was the source earlier this week. <laughs> James Conner, full practice, supposed to be back out there dealing with the shoulder separation, but Thursday night, we're going to talk about the game today, but James Conner expected back out on the field. Yeah, expected to play, still slight chance that he won't be, but a full practice on Tuesday, I think he'll be there. Are you worried about any re-injury? I mean, at this of point, of course, because he's getting injured every single week. And now look what Matt Breida did. He's going to have to up the ante to match yeah. it. Yeah, and and really, it's not. I'm not worried about re-injury of the shoulder. Uh, I'm worried about re-injury of the rest of his body. All of the parts. <laughs> all of the parts have been hurt, and you know the. I don't think this was on this show. I think this was on our SiriusXM live show where we were doing the Halloween candy comp. But when someone compared him to a Three Musketeers bar because oh. it looks all hard and rigid on the outside, but then it just soft, soft, soft oh. nougat in the middle. Here, here's the thing. I am worried about re-injury because you come down one time on that shoulder. You're dealing with the AC joint. It could be a pain tolerance thing that he gets through. And, but he runs. He kind of hurts himself in the way he plays. And as far as he's just a really – uh, he's just a good player, and he plays hard, and now when he you fights for the last yard. When you say worried, are you pivoting to a lower tier I, option? I doubt you have that option. Well, I'm saying you. It would have to be you're pivoting down. So it'd be like, are you playing James Conner, or maybe you grabbed Brian Hill off of the waiver run, or you're playing like Ronald Jones against the Saints? I don't like it when you ask me questions. <laughs> It's inconvenient for me, and the I, the tr like I, I apologize, uh, uh, Brian Hill. I like a lot this week, so that's a challenge. I think you go with James Conner. Okay, I've seen enough of what isn't James Conner on the Steelers team oh, yes. to know what Conner means to them and what it's going to represent. This is a team that's playing incredible defense since Minka Fitzpatrick was acquired. They're going to win on running and defense. It's not going to be on Mason Rudolph dissecting a defense, unfortunately for, I don't know, his parents. All right, Pete Carroll believes Tyler Lockett's not going to miss any games. It was a, a serious issue. He had a two nights in the hospital dealing with a, a severe contusion. That can lead to this, compart I think it's called compartment syndrome, something of that nature, where you can actually, if you're not taken care of, you can lose blood blood flow and lose a limb, that type of situation. That's not what's happening. He is under control. And Pete Carroll basically said, hey, he's supposed to play. So we yeah, expect him out there. They've got their bye week, so that it timed up really nice to give him an extra week of rest here. Yeah, good point. Matt Breida may miss some time. It's always about time for Breida to miss some time. It's true. Saying that Matt Breida may, quote, may miss some time. A couple of like, snaps? I mean – you could say that any week blindly. It's like pin the tail on the donkey without a blindfold. <laughs> of course, he may miss some time, but he 
He never ends up not being active for the game, though, and that's what I don't like. I think he'll miss this week, and I think Raheem Mostert's a solid Man, start. That would be I, so yeah. great. Which you'll play against me. Yes, I will. Uh, but you see, you you set a good example for the Foot Clan out there, which is you had an opportunity to just add somebody at random on Monday morning. You didn't pass up on it. Or you added Raheem Mostert because why not? Why not just add a running back? If you had done that with, you know, Brian Hill, you know, you could have done it with Penny and, and seen what happened with Carson. You're not going to get it right every week, but if you take the shot, you've got a player that you can play. Yeah. All right, we have Emmanuel Sanders news. Day-to-day, -day, expected to be a game-time decision. You this, think he plays? This dude is unbelievable. He's, he's Wolverine. He his healing powers are unbelievable. I I definitely think he plays. Kyle Shanahan also hopeful that George Kittle returns against the Cardinals. Cardinals less hopeful. <laughs> Cardinals <laughs> much less hopeful. As am I. I I would, you know, I I don't know. It, was it weird to either of you guys that George Kittle was up in the booth and like no. not down? I mean. Every time there's an injured player, I thought I did. I saw it and I thought about it. I have to admit I mean, that when I like, saw it, I was like, "Oh, he just wanted wanted to sit up there, huh?" You know, and I, oh, I get it. He's leaning against the glass. It just seemed like, is there more going on here with this knee injury? I, I don't think so. I right. and I, for him, he's active equals play. That's yes, what he is. for Hundred percent. Hey guys, Chris Herndon's on IR now. Oof. Season over. Great, great season, Chris. That was an awesome season. Can I unsay all the words <laughs> I've ever said about him this year and just pretend they didn't exist? Just just fast forward to next year. Unbreak my heart, Chris. I think this is when what, we're all real excited for Chris Herndon again. I think oh. it, in honor of Chris Herndon and uh, in honor of <laughs> You're not uh, wrong. our <laughs> listeners, the best thing we can say from here on out on the show about Chris Herndon is Coach Doug Peterson said Alshon Jeffrey is day-to-day. -day. <laughs> that is the next piece of news. Yes. Let's move on. That's true. He's day-to-day. -day. And David Njoku is optimistic he'll be able to play when he comes off IR next week. That's something to pay attention to. Maybe. I was I was going to pick him up, but I... Said I, Chris Herndon. Yeah. I looked and he's not <laughs> eligible <laughs> to play this week. So, yeah. I mean, you, you can look into that... Uh, Neck, pick them up next week. Uh, right. Drop it like it's hot. A reminder, check your waiver wire for who people let go of this week. There might be some names out there. And uh, again, we want to thank Sleeper for uh, sponsoring the news and notes. Don't miss a piece of impactful news. Check out the Sleeper app. Before we get into the mailbag, I want to thank today's sponsor, Burrow. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what the best part of the fall is. You, Of course you do because you're listening to this podcast. It's football. And when you're watching the football, you got to make sure football you... Time. You got to make sure that your couch situation is locked up. That's why you got to check out Burrow. Burrow sofas can handle the rowdiest game day hangs with their kiln dried Baltic birch frames and durable fabric that's naturally scratch and stain resistant. Burrow is totally customizable. You get the fabric color, the leg finish, armrest style, and length that you want. You want a Chase Lounge or an Ottoman? Boom. Burrow's got you. And they have built-in USB chargers, so the phone is not going to die while you're watching fantasy. That's nice. While you're watching the football, get those fantasy scores. I have re-outfitted my front room with Burrow. They're, they are very comfortable. They are sharp. They are very easy on the eye. I highly recommend it. And this football season, don't settle for your same old couch. Settle into a comfy new Burrow sofa. Get 75 bucks off a new sofa and free one-week shipping at burrow.com slash footballers. That's B-U-R-R-O-W dot com slash footballers for 75 bucks off a new sofa. And uh, men that are my friends that are <laughs> maybe losing your hair. Your bald, look, bald brethren. I get it. It's rough. It can be devastating out there, but there are, there are easy ways that you can actually get FDA-approved treatment to help stop that hair loss even regrow in some cases and that's due to our good friends over at Roman look you're you're not you're not less of a man if you're concerned do some about it you can connect with a US licensed physician for a free online evaluation and see what treatment options are right for you uh, if their doctor decides that medication is appropriate then Roman will deliver it right to your door in discreet packaging with free 2-day shipping it's very very easy you could do it from home 
from your mobile device. Go to GetRoman.com slash footballers to start your free online visit. Roman gets members started with a free online visit and free two-day shipping. Visit GetRoman.com slash footballers. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. GetRoman.com slash footballers. All right. Time to jump into the mailbag. Get those pipes ready. Mike, here we go. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right. If you have a question, you can head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button. You can also dial our voicemail hotline. That's 302-464-TFFB. Let's kick this thing off with a couple of very open-ended, what do I do questions? What do I do with David Johnson? Mm. Wait, is this did this come in from Cliff Kingsbury? Oh, oh my goodness. Multiple multiple people asking this question. I believe Steve uh, Kime. Yes, Kime. <laughs> yeah, is one of those people. Michael Bidwell. Mm -hmm. Kenyon Drake. <laughs> da uh, it looks like one of these questions came in from uh David Johnson. Oh no. Listen. If you've been on I think Jason or my Twitter over the last day, you've seen a few tweets that include a video. Oh, and it shows goodness. it shows somebody named David Johnson <sighs> running laterally. Running is running a, is yeah, way sorry. too kind of a word. Meandering laterally, and then deciding where to fall, how to get pancaked. Yes, and this you know we're from. This has multiple layers of sadness for us because we're from Arizona, mm -hmm. Cardinal fans. We know David Johnson. Love We've David spent Johnson. spent time with him. Great guy. And I choose to believe this is related to what Cliff Kingsbury has said this week, multiple injuries, ankle, back problems. Because if it's not, David Johnson's time as a professional, not just a fantasy option, but as like a, a, a mainstay in the backfield – is going to be over. That being said, what do you do with him now as a fantasy owner? What are you thinking about? Uh, the only thing you can do is the same thing that Cliff Kingsbury did, and that's bench him. You obviously can't move on from him. You can't drop him. You're not going to be able to trade him for the name value after the run of disappointing games. That window is closed. So it's actually a really, really easy decision. You have to bench him. And it's, a, it's brutal, but it's easy. He belongs on your bench. You cannot start him until he looks healthy on the field. Yeah, um, and you're just gonna you're gonna take a loss. Hopefully, hopefully you're gonna take a loss one of these weeks on having a good game on your bench. But you're going to prepare yourself by getting all the bad ones out of the way first. And if you, I went back and watched uh, Cliff Kingsbury's press conference yesterday because I wanted to specifically see what he was saying about David Johnson, and he got benched because he wants to put the best players on the field. And when he was asked, is this going to go forward? Is this going to impact his playing time? Cliff Kingsbury said, you know, I'm going to just put the best player on the field that gives us the best chance to win. And David Johnson's great. And when he's ready, you know, then then he'll be out there. But, I mean, essentially, he's not ready. He's he's not going to be the lead dog. I think Kenyon Drake could very well be the 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 leader this coming week. Yeah, he could be. And then the matchup is, is against San Francisco, and lucky for DJ, they got they have the bye week coming up still. So he could be he he could be ready to go for the end of the year. But well, Chase, then, Chase Edmonds is going to come back after yeah, the bye week as well, true. and so you'll have three situ. And you wonder why you brought Kenyon Drake in, right? If you if they thought David Johnson was a guarantee to come back to form, you don't necessarily make that trade in the middle of the season so it makes you question things you're 100 percent right you cannot rest on the laurels of the past you will lose with your fantasy team and what do you do with aj green do you just cut aj green at this point i think you can yeah because i think part of the question is what do you get when he's back yeah I and mean, you get ryan finley like for example th there's probably not a better wide receiver or upside play that you can get off your waiver wire but I'd rather have my handcuff. I'd rather be looking at next week for a defensive play. I'd rather be stashing a defense for the fantasy playoffs than holding on to green. Yeah, 100%. And and he's going to hurt you when he's back, if he's back. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what how, how Tyler Boyd's doing. I actually really like uh, sneak peek to tomorrow. I like Tyler Eifert a lot. 
Hmm. I think Tyler Eifert is a very sneaky tight end play this week. He had his best game of the season last week with Ryan uh, Finley. He's also in a situation with no A.J. Green, no Tyler Boyd potentially where Eifert, they may need to lean on him in the passing game. He scored last week, a bunch of targets. I like him. Uh, but this is a, a low upside situation holding on to A.J. Green. And that's disappointing because I thought he'd be back by now. And I was wrong. Twitter, Big Dave wants to hey, know something. Big Dave. Yeah, he says, what are your thoughts on trade veto etiquette? Mm. I've seen three trades vetoed in our league for reasons such as I didn't want so-and-so's team to be good or I veto all trades. Personally, I feel the veto is ex- is for extreme collusion. What say you all, says at Big Dave Philly. They don't call you Big Dave for nothing, okay? <laughs> Big Dave's got a right here. It's for uh, collusion. Did they call him Big Dave because of his veto takes? No, yeah, because, look, <laughs> you know, when you're better. It's you're... big of you, Dave. Yeah, exactly. Look, Big Dave is right. Trades are for uh, collusion only. I like that. Trades says, are for collusion. Or, uh, vetoes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, trades are only. I don't to be trade made. often, but when I do, I it's, collu- <laughs> it's for collusion. Uh, yeah, the veto should not be used unless uh, something nefarious just, is going the, on. No veto, just vetoes. Turn them off. They're archaic. It, like fantasy football was a different place ten years ago. We we have moved past that. If you're playing trade, a, trade should be instantaneous. There should not be a two day oh, waiting period. Yes. A tr- if if two people agree on a trade, boom, it's, it's, it's done. It's done. They they have agreed that this is a good you trade for both parties. You don't need to have them pass a physical before they can be <laughs> on your roster. It's fantasy. Here's what we're not saying. We're not saying you don't stop collusion. We're saying the mechanism by which. You think you need to stop it is archaic. Yes. Which is if two teams collude, first of all, get them out your league. Yeah. But if you can't, you know, you might not have the luxury at that moment. The commissioner can then, you know, fix or you can discuss that as a group. You don't have to have a formalized veto system to control that. It hurts me to hear I don't want so and so's team to be good. That's why. What's the point Dude, of a trade? It's are, to make your team good. There are so many trades that happen in our league. And I hate every single one because I usually think someone won. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll, you make a trade with someone and I go, oh, dang it. I'm so upset because one team got better, in my opinion, on that trade. And I don't like it. But I would never, ever, ever say, so you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention that trade might very well go the complete opposite direction. We've seen that over you know, almost 15 years of playing. Mm-hmm. You think you steal a player. We looked back at a dynasty trade yesterday. Oh man! Did you see that, Mike? My uh, when I unloaded Gurley oh, this off Gurley season. Trade? Yes. Yeah, that trade now seems bad. <laughs> yeah, but that. I sent uh, Todd Gurley away in a dynasty league for Dalvin Cook, a first rounder, and two second rounders, and uh, and two players, Robbie Anderson, and Robbie Anderson. So at the yeah. time, that seemed like a fair trade. That was at right time, before the knee news. With the, Gurley. Yeah, I mean, it was just the doubt was there from the playoffs. Oh. But but trades can go sideways. Tra- that Nobody, when that went through, thought I stole Dalvin Cook or thought that Gurley was, you know, some people were mad Gurley got moved to that team. And so my, it just changes. Yeah, my, my infamous D. Johnson trade, <laughs> you know, where I uh, got Duke Johnson. <laughs> Looks like I got the better D. Johnson. Lucky. All right, Instagram question. This one's from Tyler. So is, is Mo Sanu an every week start now, or do I wait and see? I'm of the opinion that you can't wait and see. It's week 11. I'm of the opinion we did wait and saw. He already, I mean, <laughs> you know, that's, you know what I mean? that's fair. Like, what are you waiting for if you're not waiting for him to be the number one target used heavily playing on all the snaps? Like, he, you saw. Yeah, start him now. Uh, Mo Sanu should be a weekly start. I like him. Yeah, he also gets Philadelphia, who their secondary is very beatable. Dallas the the next week, not a not the best matchup. But then Houston. I mean, yes, Mosinu is an every week start. They gave a second round pick for him. Here's a great question from Facebook. Matthew T says Brian Hill or Odell <laughs> Beckham Jr. in your flex. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. I am playing Brian Hill over Me- Odell a hundred percent. I'm not playing Odell Thursday night. Joe Hayden, Minka Fitzpatrick, I'm not doing it. 
No, I, it's a hundred percent. The reason I laugh in joy is because it's Brian Hill is the answer, and that's not to say Odell Beckham can't monster his way to a great game. And that is the that is his weekly. Yeah, well, it's like his publicist sent us that, and we have to say every week. It's not like Odell can't blank. I'm not saying you're saying it incorrectly, Jay. It's just what we've said every week. Yeah, because for for ten weeks we've said it's not like he can't break a long play. That's that's most players. Anybody could screw up our projections by breaking a long play. Odell's super talented, but if you think he's beating Hayden and Fitzpatrick after what he's been doing this year, J.J. Zacharyson on his pod just brought up since the Fitzpatrick trade, opposing quarterbacks are averaging 10 fantasy points for the whole game. That's what they're doing against but, Pittsburgh. But don't you think Baker's the one to buck that trend? Uh, nope. Because he's been so good. <laughs> it's Brian um, Hill. Yeah, I mean, Odell Beckham's the wide receiver. 37, 24, 48, 16, 61, 68, 46. Those are his weekly fit. He's not a he's not a must start every week. Man, man, that's crazy. All right, let's go with uh, a Twitter question here. Yeah, it's from at OL Browning 8. Terry McLaurin. Or Juju Smith Schuster, rest of season. I will take Juju Smith Schuster. I mean, you've got a very similar situation here: two talented wide receivers with two quarterback problems. Who's the better quarterback between Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins? Don't, unknown, unknown. And please don't make me answer that. <laughs> Who's the better player right now between Juju Smith Schuster and Terry McLaurin? I definitely think it's Juju Smith-Schuster. He's been in the league a couple more years. He's matured. Terry McLaurin is still a rookie. So I am on the Juju Smith-Schuster side. Yeah, they both have a pretty good schedule the rest of the way. I would stack on top of your argument which players on a better team. And I believe that's also Juju. It is. but I I'm, think both players have potential. I'm taking Terry. Are you? I am. You. He gets the Jets. He gets the Lions next week. The Lions, if you... If you're paying attention, they are bleeding points to quarterbacks and wide receivers. Very painful. Okay. All right. In the, I, in the playoffs, he gets the Eagles again. I, at home. I'll go ahead and go over to this screen. I know, the Giants. I know it's coming. All right. Uh, listen, I I already lost. I will admit I lost my Juju uh, Amari Cooper bet, stupid Big Ben, um, like he got hurt on purpose. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you dummy. <laughs> Stupid uh, big Ben, do you think about my water bet? But I want a Juju Smith Schuster bet that I can get a part of and win at this at or this point. Or lose because of Juju twice. Sure. Mike, are you yeah, in I'll on take, that? Yes. That's I'll take rest it. of season? Yes. Yep. So week eleven on. Water bet. <laughs> here's, here's another one. Can we do it again? Instagram question Juju or Devontae Parker rest of season Devontae Parker is my answer Parker I agree with that one <laughs> schedules too juicy the one of the problems with Juju is you look at the target share that he's been getting and the the lack of you know they don't throw the ball a ton with Mason Rudolph and if you get James Conner back we'll give the old Odell Beckham he can always break a big yeah. play but you're playing the odds yeah Parker's got his end of season, Philly, Jets, Giants, Cincinnati. Oh, yes. You're going to – people, people are going to win a championship with Devontae Parker in their lineup. Look, it happens every single year that a player over the second half you who you thought was disgusting and gross – Hold your nose. They Put them in your lineup. They turn things around and they win you a title. It happens. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Cassidy. Cassidy says, Ballers. You guys are still offering trade advice, but the default trade cutoff in Yahoo leagues is eleven nine. What date do you guys think should be the optimal trade deadline? Yeah, I think we we had given quite a bit of trade advice last week, heading into this week, and it depends. My answer to this is it depends on your league. It depends 100%. on the the nature of your league. I think the default trade cutoff is fine for the majority of leagues. Uh, our league of record has three keepers and draft pick trading. So we have chosen to move it up so that teams have to make a decision about their roster before 
their record is so defined that they could either sell or buy. So some decisions have to get made. We like we talked about it this year, maybe just moving it to match the NFL trade deadline. Yeah, if you're in a keeper league, I think that that's a really easy target. Because if, if we say, uh, you know, week eight or week nine or we say November 1st, you, you know, you're, it's going to be hard to remember every year. Like, oh, wait, what was that advice? But if, if it's just match the actual real NFL trade deadline. Let, make your fantasy one. In a, in a keeper league. Yes, in a keeper league. Yeah. Uh, make it the same as, as your, your – uh, as the real NFL's trade deadline, I would do that. And if you're in a regular league, I don't mind a late one. I don't, you know, it I don't. Should be. It shouldn't be 11 9 or whatever week that was. Like, trading should still be happening, in my opinion, right now. If it's just a pure redraft, you should be able to trade right now. I would say this should be the last week. I agree with that. You you run into, I mean, we've seen enough Megalobowl leagues, whether we ask them not to. The, you can get into dangerous ground when you enter NFL playoffs with trades that can happen that week. And that's part to me. That's part of strategy for fantasy, is you're preparing your team for the playoffs. So, you know, this is a big, exciting time of the year. It's always very fun in our leagues when oh. the last 24 hours before the trade deadline, and we got a Slack channel up, and people it's are. A, it's it should be a holiday. Like we should have it off work. Oh, and you 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 just talk trades that whole night. The the our trade deadline night is just everyone on a computer chatting with everybody, <laughs> trying to wheel and deal. I know I have no need for it because we have the technology to just send trade offers, but part of me wishes I had like a team of like six or seven runners that would run my trade offers around. Yeah. You know, deliver them. I just wish I had manually like an old fashioned big telephone handset. Oh, okay. Oh, see, I want the... it like a switchboard or like no, no, a... no. You know, they back when you had a landline. Oh, okay. And it was the the big earpiece and the big mouthpiece, and then when you're angry. Slam it down. Yeah. Or That's like, true. I, I just want the normal old rotary phone. I'll give phone. you a second. Click. I, I want the normal old rotary phone so yeah. I can slam it down, but I need one for each team. So, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm Whoa, hold But it's on. not the rotary. It's just, it's like the bat phone. It's just one button. Yeah, there's one, there's, but it's still rotary. You oh. just have to, you have to, sl <laughs> <laughs> and then it calls that team. Okay. I think All right. We're I think to, we got there. I think we're on to something. Here, I need an entire room. In my house dedicated to my trade phones. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, the trade deadline is gone, sir. Oh, dang Clear it. this room out. <laughs> lock <laughs> it up. Till next. <laughs> lock the room till next year. It's used one 24-hour period a year. That's not true. Right before the draft as well. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, glad we could answer that one. Chris wants to know from Facebook, how do you deal with people not setting their lineups at uh, this time of the year? Uh, you you got to have a rule. I mean, I, I like the rule, and, and there's debate on both sides as to whether or not players should be able to, uh, in the best interest of their team, not fill a roster, right? By Apocalypse last week, we had a lot of these questions. I like the that's, rule. I think I don't think that's what Chris is asking. No, no, no. About. It's not. It's not. But it, to answer what he's saying, I think you should have a rule in your league that you must field an active roster. You have to have everybody filled. In which case, once you have the rule, you can talk to an owner and say, "Hey, you know, if you didn't set your lineup, you didn't get this thing done. You need to do that, or 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 you'll have to be out of the league." Yeah, you have to be you have to be proactive as a commissioner or as a league in this situation where you kind of have that conversation, make sure the lineup's filled, and uh, you can't have that default, in my opinion, where you know the commissioner is now responsible for setting three or four lineups. No, because commissioners are going to have to make decisions. So if you need to be formulaic about it, I guess you could go based on you know pick a set of rankings somewhere, but at the same time, that's a disadvantage, right? Because you need those owners that aren't performing to make their own decisions and not affect the the league. You know, back in elementary school, whenever you go on a, a field trip, you always had your field trip buddy. Yeah. And you're responsible for each other. I mean, like in your fantasy league. I sat alone on the bus. <laughs> this explains a lot. <laughs> uh, but at, at draft, everyone should be assigned, okay, there's, here's your fantasy buddy. Make sure you got the other person's phone number. Oh, stop it. No, like people don't need to grow up and play fantasy the whole year long. Well, I totally agree with that, but there are people out there that forget to set their lineups. So have your fantasy buddy call you on Saturday night and say, dude, uh, please set your lineup. Does he call me on the rotary? Of course. Okay. On the solo phone. <laughs> hey, here's another thing. Get a waiting list for your league. Yeah. Every, every 
every cool person you run into that you're friends with that you're like, I really like that person. Invite them to your league, even if it's full. Say, oh, man, would you want to play fantasy football with me? Yeah. Be just like, kidding. Oh, no, not j- <laughs> just kidding, sucker. Uh, you you're on wi- a waiting list. You wish. Yeah, just say, oh, I'll get you on the waiting list as soon as- Because once you have a waiting list, it's a powerful tool. <laughs> the owners that are like... Yeah, you do have leverage now. You have leverage in the sense that you know it might motivate an owner to stick with it, make the roster moves, whatever. Or, on the flip side, a lot of times the hard part of getting rid of a bad owner is like, well, but who do we replace them yeah, with? Yeah, or they feel guilty. They might right. want to leave, but they don't. They think you're, they're going to sell you short as a exactly. league. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. Have some, uh, and you get no awkward conversations. Then it's a simple question of, do you still want to play? Right. Oh, you don't. Okay, we got somebody that wants to. Okay, exactly. goodbye. All right, let's move on. Thursday night breakdown. All right, the Steelers, Browns, in Cleveland Thursday night. The line is two and a half. Browns are favored. And it's a 40-point over-under, which is not a high one. Uh, are you guys intrigued by that line at all? I am surprised that the Browns are favored. It's an interesting situation. I, I have to give a lot of credit to the Steelers organization for the way they've been able to piece together this season with a backup quarterback, no Antonio Brown, no Le'Veon Bell, injured James Conner, the trade for Fitzpatrick, and ultimately, that comes down to the head coach, too, and Mike Tomlin. And I've been, you know, pretty out on the Steelers being able to survive. And, and to me, it kind of looks a lot like the Seahawks, where people wanted to count them out. You lose your lesion of boom. You mm. lose Marshawn Lynch. The lesions. Did I say lesion? <laughs> yeah, the the lesion, lesion of, of boom. boom. Generally that's speaking, something else. you have to go to a doctor to remove the lesion of boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right strong point that completely distracts what i was saying but i should have said legion and what's <laughs> but i i know i know what you're saying here in the sense that a good organization run well from the top down they they usually well you fight through what would be for another organization a four-year down period and this is the ex- this game is the tale of two d- very different organizations because this was the year where the hype for the browns and Baker and Odell and Jarvis and you know uh, the, 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 even even a defense with some big stars on it they were going to be a Super Bowl darling pick and it's just when the organization is dysfunctional at the top it's really hard to have a good football team on the field. Yeah, I'll give credit to the Browns. They beat Buffalo last week and uh they're back home and we get Baker v Rudolph in this one. Mason Rudolph just averaging 190 passing yards, so that just f- further illustrates the lack of upside for Juju, even if he can ha- even if he can be the the main guy. And last week it was, you know, James Washington. Then it was Deontay Johnson. You know, not expecting nobody's thinking about Mason Rudolph from a fantasy perspective. Is anybody thinking about Baker this uh, week? No, I don't think so. No, no, not against the Steelers. No. So far in the season, uh, the Steelers are 11th against fantasy quarterbacks, 6th against running backs, 16th against wideouts. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, can I, you play both of these guys, or are you kind of Chubb only because of the matchup? I, I, you know, uh, Chubb is, uh, you're going to play him every week because he's Nick Chubb. He's been a great fantasy option. Hunt is a guy that I think you could get away with in a PPR, but you have to see him take the name out. I mean, he's basically Duke Johnson for this team. If Duke Johnson were there, which he was, uh, you know, how valuable is he? He's going to get a couple passes. If he breaks something off, okay. You you can put him in in a pinch, but I don't think he's a guy that you're wanting to start. I mean, maybe. He had he had nine targets, and he had four carries and nine targets. Like, that's that's a decent opportunity, especially when you are at, as good at football as Kareem Hunt. According to Pro Football Focus, he missed – he forced seven missed tackles on 11 touches. Like, the dude is crazy good. He's on the field. They were they had two running backs on the field uh, a, a ton. And if you looked at like the next gen stats of when Nick Chubb was actually successful, it was when Kareem Hunt was on the field. Like, this this creates a a very different dynamic for the Cleveland Browns offense. Forty three percent of the time, that's how often they were out there together last week. And 
we didn't really talk about it, but Antonio Callaway got suspended last week for another off the field situation or disagreement between the head coach. They need weapons. I mean, they don't have Njoku back yet. Yeah. That being said, the matchup's not ideal. So you are banking on a lot from a little is the way it looks target. And, and I'm not saying Kareem Hunt's a RB two. I sure. just, he's a flex play who's in there. Like if should I play this third wide receiver or Kareem Hunt? I think you can play Are Kareem. you talking about Odell? Oh, oh goodness, man. that's rough. Uh, now to get back to Baker real quick, because no, we're not going to play him in this matchup, but because this is where we're talking about Baker for this week, he is an interesting guy to keep your eye on for if you're a, a streaming quarterbacks. Uh, you know the schedule after this for the Browns, uh, and and likewise their their defense. The Browns DST is an, is a nice long term one. You get the Dolphins. Uh, you get the Bengals, you get the Cardinals, uh, and then the Bengals again. Four of their next uh, their next right. six games. To highlight how good the Pittsburgh lines have been, the offensive line has the lowest sack rate allowed in football, and their defensive line has the second highest sack rate in football. Probably going to be a very brutal reminder to Cleveland and their organization yes. on what they got wrong this year on the offensive. Line side of the ball, a quick. May I think we all would, as bad of a year as Baker Mayfield's had, I think we'd all agree he's a better quarterback than Mason Rudolph at this stage 100%. of his career. Yes, yes, for sure. But Mason Rudolph can have success because his offensive line is giving him time to make his reads, maybe his read, and make the throw. <laughs> and so you got to give them credit. Where's James, Jalen Samuels? There he is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's nice to hear you pluralize him this time. It's it was hard to do. To singular or to plural? To say Samuels. Okay. Uh, as opposed to Debo? Yes. James Conner is our RB15 on the week. Last year when he faced Cleveland, the numbers were quite astronomical. 36 touches, 192 yards, two touchdowns. 29 touches, 212 yards, and two touchdowns. Should be more of the same if he can just stay on the field. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think that the recommendation here obviously is if he is active, which he appears to be, you play him. They held him out specifically so that he could be right, and uh, you know we'll talk about him a little bit more tomorrow. I'm sure. I have two more players that I I a few a few more. I guess we'll get into the wideouts first. Deontay Johnson. To me, he looks more and more integrated in the offense, more and more comfortable. I think that you have. Mason Rudolph, uh, comfortable throwing to Deontay Johnson. Are you interested in him at all in this matchup? Oof, that's a tough question because I was I was going to bring up you know James Washington. You don't want to chase points, but James Washington the last two weeks four for sixty nine and then six for ninety with a touchdown. Like yeah, he is also maybe we answered the question with he's also trending up. That I, I think they're both. Uh, desperation plays at the wide receiver, it, it, but both of them are similar tiers. Like if if you're interested in playing Deontay, then I'm okay playing James Washington. I see them as very, uh, so, so very what, similar outcomes. So what you're saying is don't play either guy. That's what I think I heard. Because if we're not confident in Juju in general, right, it's hard to be 190 passing yards. Go distribute it. There's yeah. There's just not enough volume. There's not enough targets and. You made the joke, Jay, about looking for Samuels, but it's true. Mason targets his running backs a ton. What about Vance? Vance played on 97% of snaps last week, had seven targets. Do you dare to dance? <laughs> He's had seven targets two weeks in a row, actually, and not really given any fantasy. He did score two week, or last week, two weeks ago, sorry. Uh, but I'm not going to stream him, no. Jarvis Landry, last three weeks. 10 targets, 13 targets, 10 targets, 9 for 97 and a touchdown, 6 for 51 and a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing Jarvis as a as a high-end 3, low-end 2. Jarvis, greater sign Odell rest of the season? For fantasy purposes, it sure seems like it. If it, you took the names out, it wouldn't be a hard decision. Yeah, it's, Correct. it's really insane. When you talk about Odell Beckham, you look at where he is in rankings on a weekly basis, and you look at Jarvis, and it seems like both are – both are 
often misranked. I mean, I read you Odell Beckham's fantasy finishes on a weekly basis. He had two good games, and then he was in the 40s and the 60s every week. Meanwhile, Jarvis was the wide receiver 7, the wide receiver 18, the wide receiver 33, 51, 38. I mean, mo you know, outside of the first three weeks, he's been relevant much more often than Odell Beckham has. All right, I think that wraps it up. By the way, the Pittsburgh defense has been outstanding. They're behind only New England in fantasy points. They've averaged two picks a game. Weeks one and two, they were 26th and 14th. Then they said, hey, Minka, come on over. 11th, 3rd, 8th, 4th, 4th, 1, 1. Yeah, they've been outrageous. 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 Just reminded me of nutrageous. <laughs> Which made me hungry. We want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a Michael Thomas signed logo football yesterday, $58.97. Check them out, pristineauction.com. That'll do it. We'll be back tomorrow, starts of the week, week 11 matchups. And uh, we're going to apologize to a few players on the oh, show tomorrow. For nothing. <laughs> Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.